Welcome back to the quick speed shop. I'm working on a 37 Ford again today. I just got the radiator back from the radiator shop, got it recored. It wasn't cheap, it was $600 for a new core for this thing, but you know, copper and brass prices are way up and everything costs a billion dollars now, now. So I got the radiator done. Let me show you real quick what it looks like. Here it is here. You got a brand new, this is a new style core, like modern style radiators, but it um, they, they use the original tanks and then they what they do is they unsweat it, take the old core out with all tubes and the fins and they put a new one in here. So I got my original tanks and side pieces and then it's got the new the new cooling part. But there was some uh, grunge in the old radiator besides the leaks. They said there was uh, some scale and stuff in the tube. So this is really a way to go besides fixing the leaks. It uh, The tubes are completely clean and brand new on the inside so it'll help in cooling so uh, it's going to be worth it in the long run to have this car be reliable to have this brand new record radiator here so i'm just cutting up some cardboard to protect the fins when i stuff it in there because it's a tight fit with the grill and the generator and uh, i'm going to try to get it in here without destroying it so let me uh, tape it on up and then we'll uh, get it in the car all right here we go Cardboarded it up, covered the generator with some rags. I know the head needs to come in here kind of at an angle. Like that, like that. So, oh, oh crap. Coil. too bad actually. Um, Got to get my cardboard off the front before I'm not able to do that. Let's see here. Leave the rear cardboard on for now because it's leaning on the generator. I got one thing I want to add here. Let me get it. Back in the day, things were, were cold out, and you ran these cars all year, obviously. And they had a thing called a, a winter front grill guard here. It's a Heinz winter front grill, or Pines, I'm sorry. Pines winter front grill company. Pines winter front company from Chicago. I've got a new old stock one here in the box, which is pretty cool. 1937 Ford. What this is, is a, a louvered piece of a sheet metal that bolts in here and it's got a cable that goes into the car and you pull on the cable for the summertime. These are a little stiff. Hold on a second. Open up. You pull on the cable like this and you open up, oops, open up the, uh, the grill like that, and then in the winter time you close it when you when you need uh, to be cold when you know, it's really cold weather. You would close it like that and block off some of the flow to the radiator and uh, make the engine run warmer. This is a vintage accessory that you could buy for your car, and I'm thinking about uh, putting it in just uh, like this, just leaving it open like this. I'm not sure. I don't know. If it just kind of slips down in here and like clips on the front of the front of the grill and the front of the radiator uh, support bar. I'm just gonna see how it looks. It actually it blocks a lot of the radiator. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. It blocks some of the radiator, quite quite a bit of the radiator. <laughs> actually. I might not be a hundred percent sold on this because if it makes my car run hot. I'm not going to like that. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's forgo this for now. Because I can just, it just slips in here and it goes on the bar through the grill. And then, and then it's got a couple of mounting tabs on it that clips onto the lower piece. So I'm going to, I'm not going to put it in right this second. I just want to get an eyeball at it. And actually I might want to paint it up. Some of the paint's coming off of here. 
But this is the original Newell Stock Pines Winter Front Grill for a 37 Ford, which I just happened to randomly come across at a swap meet, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I'm going to set this aside. Oh, you know what? It needs some work too. The spot weld, a couple of spot welds came loose. I'm going to probably restore this thing up and if it, it'll, it'll easily slip down and go in the car. I can add it later. But I think I'll restore it and then uh, be a cool vintage accessory to have in the car. And uh, there we go. Look that up if you want. Pines Winter Front Grill. So that's pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and install the radiator here. Get the bolts back in. I get the hoses on it. Then we'll refill the engine with coolant. And uh, in the meantime, while this was out, if you saw the last video, I finished doing the exhaust system. So this car is full exhaust all the way out the back now. So once I get the coolant back in the engine, we'll fire it back up with the full length uh, straight pipe dual exhaust and see how it sounds. It should sound good. And I also sealed up all the head bolts last time with a sealer. So none of the head bolts should be leaking. And there, hopefully all the water leaks will be taken care of and this thing will be ready to... Uh, drive here real soon. I've run into a little snag here, the radiator. See how close the core is? It's touching the radiator here, but my brackets that mount the uh, grill to the radiator are not lined up on either side. This side's closer, but it's interfering here and sitting here. What I think happened is this, this new core is too wide on top. I mean, it's supposed to taper and it's not the radiator shop's fault, it's they ordered this core and it's got to, you know, it probably comes squared off and the original one was probably tapered a little bit to clear, clear to see how the grill comes in. So there's no way to wad this radiator up into the grill any farther. It's hitting the brackets and I think I got room to lean it back like an inch up on the top, but my rods here, my, my uh, support rods that go to this piece, the th you ran out of thread so I'll probably have to, sh I'll have to shorten these. I mean, the, the radiator shop stuck with the core they got, and, you know, this is a real, real tight-fit radiator, and it's obvious that the the replacement core was just is too wide and probably not tapered like it's supposed to be originally on top in there a little bit. So I'm going to have to make it work because it's what I got to work with. But I think I can space it back about an inch, make a little bracket, bolt, bolt, bolt here, then bolt it, make a little tab and bolt it. And just lean it back like about one inch and it should be fine on the top. I'm going to get the fan out and put the fan in make sure that's going to clear and then uh, make something up to swedge this together. I, the pads where the the lower radiator feet sit on the frame this one this car has been hit on this side the one was tweaked up just a little bit I tweaked that down and actually I rolled them down even more and then I took the feet of the bottom of the radiator and I cranked them up a little bit try to get this thing to sink down because I think if I can get it down just a little bit it'll fit in here better then you saw me clearance the grill just a little bit just a little bit oh yeah it's a lot a lot better. It's still gonna fit super tight, but but that gets me closer. It gets me closer to where it's gotta be. It's still tight. It's still super tight. It's gotta go. Oop, there we go. fan was, I couldn't just lean it back like I said I wanted to just lean it back like an inch. The fan was going to be like right into the, right into the core. So that, that wasn't going to work. So that's why I had to trim here. But I'm getting closer. Um, actually almost up to the threads on this bar. If I could get it to go ahead just a little bit more in the hole here, that would be good. I think I'm going to be able to work with it and get it to uh, get to go where it's got to be. I'm just going to have to futz with it a whole bunch here and push and prod and kind of lean. I think I can get it pretty close to what it's actually got to do to get in here. All right, I left out a whole bunch of stuff. 
nothing important. It was just an hour of in and out, in and out, in and out, that's what she said, with the radiator. And I finally got it to fit. Check this out. I had to actually roll the edge of the grill around here. There's like sheet metal and a lip. I had to roll the edge of this. It's right into the fins, but it's not hitting the core. It's kind of super tight on here. I was able to elongate the holes just a little bit in the grill, get this mounted. The, the uh, hood rods, I have a couple threads left. I was able to get them on, get it up secure. It's bolted down below. This side, I uh, bolted on good. They actually, this hole is drilled crooked from the factory. So I slotted that. This one lined up here and bolted on. So I've got the radiator bolted in all the way. The bottom pads are bolted down. It's nice and tight now, and uh, everything is going to be A-OK, -okay, I believe, as long as I didn't beat on it and crack it or anything, but I didn't really have to force it too bad. Um, it should be good now. So what I'm going to do now is fill the engine up with coolant. I'm going to fill it through the heads first to get all the water, get all the air pushed out of the block. So I'm going to put it in a, a funnel, fill it through the heads. When it gets up to the head level, then I'll put the upper hoses on and then continue to fill it through the radiator. It takes about four, four and a half quart or gallons, I'm sorry, about four and a half gallons to fill this up, I think. So we'll get the water all put back in it. And then last time I put new electrical system on here, one knot cables. I got a battery cost switch so I can always shut the battery off in the car um, under the firewall there. So the electric is ready to go and then it should be all fire right back up with the new full length exhaust system. I can't wait to hear it. So let's start filling this up with coolant. I gotta go do some other stuff, but I'll come back and we'll, okay, you guys aren't going anywhere, but I, I will, I'll be back in a couple hours. But by the magic of TV, it'll be right now. I don't like this new coolant that's like yellow. I like green coolant. Why has it gotta be yellow? It's just like the coolant for everybody, I guess, but I wish it was green because it looks like it's weak to me. But here we go, we're filling her up. Hopefully nothing leaks. Because I don't want to have to take the radiator out ever again because that was a struggle getting it in there. And the lower hoses are a real struggle. I found the secret is I took a little bit of silicone, um, I got, not like RTV, but just like silicone, silicone, and I lubed up the inside of the hoses and I was able to get them to slide on a lot easier. You gotta like bend them in half to stuff them onto the radiator. That worked a lot better. So we're gonna fill her up just like this. One down. I'm gonna keep giving her until it gets up to the head level, then I'll put the upper hoses on and we'll fill it kirk through the radiator. But this will guarantee that there's no air stuck in the block by filling up the whole block first. All right, filled everything up. I don't see any leaks. I spilled a little bit out of the engine when I was filling it up before I could came out of the head over here. But I've got that kind of blowed off the engine the most. There's a little bit of drips here and there, but everything appears to be good. I don't see any leaks on the hoses or the radiator. And it's filled right up nice. So I've hooked up the battery. Uh, I built the full exhaust system in the meantime while I was waiting for the radiator. So it's got pipes all the way out the back. So we're going to go ahead and hit it and uh, see how it sounds with the, uh, the new um, full length exhaust system. Probably don't need to choke because it's like 90 degrees out. All right. Let's turn the ignition on, turn the fuel pump on. It had run out of gas before, so right now it's pumping air. Okay, I don't hear it pumping any air anymore. Squirting. Here we go, ready? It's worse it's gonna happen. Might need to choke.
Ooh, that's a lot louder than I thought it was going to be. Uh-oh. Damn, man. That's loud. That is a lot louder than I thought it was going to be. thing sounds awesome I don't know uh, I know it's got adjustable lifters I don't know if it's got a cam in or not the idle seems awful lumpy for if it's got a stock cam just with adjustable lifters or I wonder if it's got a small cam in it um, I talked to the guy who put the motor together and he didn't think he put a cam in it I don't know if it's the pipes and stuff or it, it seems lumpier than like a stock flathead would sound I would guess but I'm not sure anyways it, it runs good it seems to run good um, good oil pressure had like 30 when it was cold and about 25 when it warmed up. The temp gauge went to uh, 180 on it eventually. I got a couple little leaks. I got these reproduction uh, flathead clamps on here. They don't squeeze really good. And I've got a little bit of leakage around this hose here. And uh, I already had the heads leaked last time. I had to end up putting regular worm drive clamps on the heads because it leaked horrendously out of there. So I think I might swap these out for some actual... Uh, worm drive clamps too because this one's leaking on this side but just a little bit i kind of overfilled the radiator because i wasn't sure how much to go and when it got warm i puked some out of the overflow tube so i caught some of that but it should balance itself out um i went right to uh, a 180 eventually it took a little while to warm up and got the 180 and stayed right there so that's where the thermostats are so that's good um 
I really don't see any other leaks or any other trouble. So what I think I'm going to do is I got to put a bunch of cotter keys back in the car. I still have the gas can just strapped to the running board. I'll probably hook the fuel line up to the actual fuel tank. Um, probably splash some gas in that and then uh, put the back wheels on, put the back shocks on, set the car down on the ground, and then uh, probably do a driving video next time. First drive. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Probably do a driving video, first drive of the thing. Um, I just want to see how it's going to work. And I think it's the point where if the gas tank holds and doesn't leak, which I haven't tried yet, hopefully it doesn't leak. It looks like it won't. If uh, that works, I don't see any reason why we can't take this thing out and drive it around. So... I'm going to work on all that stuff off camera, get it all put back together the rest of the way. Just a bunch of little trinket work here. And uh, yeah, and I think next time with the 37 Ford, we'll take it out first drive and see how it works. I'm really excited now. I'm glad I, even though it hurt my wallet, I spent the $600 on the radiator. It's in there now. It, it's going to cool great. It doesn't leak. So that's, that's super awesome. And uh, yeah, the 37 Ford is almost done. Just got to do a couple inside things on a paint the floor and do all a couple things before I put the interior back in it but it's this project's wrapping up and I should be able to drive it this summer around town and once I get a little feel for it maybe take it out a little bit further away so uh getting excited I hope you like the sound of these straight pipes they're a lot louder than I thought they're gonna be and uh, we'll see how that goes but it's it's the flathead sounds what you would have had the kids of the hot rods in the 50s and customs of straight pipes and uh it definitely has a straight pipe flathead sound. It's just louder than I thought it was going to be, but whatever. So I'm excited, and uh, come back next time when we take this thing for a ride. Till then, we'll see you again. Bam, doing cool flathead stuff at the Quick Speed Shop. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home.